If you currently own a Samsung Galaxy Note, you better be prepared to hold on to it. As yes, we have some new and stronger rumors that hint to Samsung finally saying goodbye to its Galaxy Note lineup. We have a full list of specifications and new features for the Galaxy S21 lineup, which are getting close. And we have some new benchmarks and CAD renders of the upcoming OnePlus 9, because, I mean, come on, it's the season for it. I'm Jaime Rivera, and to my brothers and sisters in Nicaragua and Honduras that are currently being hit by Hurricane Iota, we're praying for you, we are bleeding with you, and uh, we are hoping for the best. This is Pocket Now Daily. The official news today begin with Apple deals because, come on, we, we know you adore them. All three of you. Beginning with the previous MacBook Air, which is $80 off, that leaves the Intel Core i3, 8 gigs of RAM, and 256 gigs of SSD model for 920 shipped. The 16-inch MacBook Pro is also $250 off, which leaves the Intel Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM, and 512 gigs of SSD for $2150 though you might not want to go for these depending on how these M1 MacBooks do. The latest iPad Pros are also on sale. For example, the 11-inch Wi-Fi only version with 128 gigs of storage is $50 off, leaving it at $739. And finally, the Apple Watch Series 6 is $50 off, which leaves the 40 millimeter GPS only variant for $350. The SE is $20 off, but you can get the GPS Plus cellular variant for $309. We've got more deals on Garmin watches, AirPods, Pro and even Galaxy watches in the links in the description below. Now, last week we got our dose of macOS Big Sur, which I was waiting for mainly for a couple of the changes that I was looking forward to, but apparently for a lot of users, it has not been all sunshine and rainbows. And that sounded so Rocky Balboa right now. I'm getting good at these puns. Several users who owned the 2013 and mid-2014 13-inch MacBook Pros upgraded to Big Sur and it has reportedly bricked their machines. According to them, their computer is stuck on a black screen and there's no way to bypass this as it is. The hotkey combinations for NVRAM and SMC and safe mode and even internet recovery are inaccessible after they installed the update. Apparently, some of these users have been asked to take their laptops for servicing but we'll see what happens. Also, keep in mind that uh, these are the oldest MacBook Pros that Big Sur is supporting. So if you're on the list, you might wanna hold off on that. Obviously, we have to hand it to Apple for their customer service support. It's really probably top in class. The problem right now with the pandemic is it's very irregular for obvious reasons. And then there's the case of people that are in countries that don't have Apple support. So hopefully you guys find a solution. And speaking of Macs, let's talk about the new kids in town, the M1 MacBook Pro and MacBook Air, which I've been waiting for. It was supposed to arrive today, but I think that UPS was just playing games with me. They keep going through benchmarks, and according to a new submission, the M1 Max just went up against the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti and AMD's Radeon RX 560. It was compared to these two to match Apple's claim of the M1's GPU handling close to 25,000 threads and delivering 2.6 teraflops. And well, in most tests, the M1 beats both of these graphics cards while reaching up to 300 frames per second in some instances. Some of these results are pretty close, like in the first Aztec Ruin setting where it actually lost to the Radeon, but then you get other cases where it just breezes through like in the Manhattan 3.1. Now we know these are older GPUs, probably three years old in some cases, but these are desktop GPUs, not mobile. But uh, one of the major reasons why this is not the hottest news is because the testing system used is designed more for mobile, so we'll take it with a grain of salt. Now, how about if we move the spotlight over to OnePlus because yes, we already have the AT, which means the rumors of the nine were only a matter of time. For starters, the Pro variant was reportedly just spotted on Geekbench revealing some new details. According to the listing, it'll pack the upcoming Qualcomm Snapdragon 875, if that's gonna be the name, and it performed pretty well in both single core and multi-core testing. Now, not much of the specs have been revealed, but some of the things we're expecting include a flat AMOLED display of up to 144 hertz refresh rate, the battery is supporting up to 65 watt charging, and speaking of the display, we also have some CAD renders of the device 
device, and they're something. These apparently belong to the regular OnePlus 9, and it packs a flat display with a small punch hole at the top left, and a near bezel-less experience. On the back, we have a triple camera array that kind of looks like if the iPhone 12 and the Galaxy S20 FE had a baby. And according to these renders, we're getting a new white color variant that actually looks pretty cool. We're expecting these phones to launch sometime in March, so we are assuming this will intensify over time. I just think that I can't wait for OnePlus to go back into the limelight of popularity because we actually adored their phones, which didn't really happen with the OnePlus 8T. Now, how about if we talk Samsung, particularly the Galaxy S21 series, as I think we've got the biggest leak ever right now. So grab some popcorn. We've got a lot to discuss. There's a full list of specs of the entire lineup that just got revealed by Android Police, and they reveal pretty much everything. Just to get it out of the way, all of these will pack a Qualcomm Snapdragon 875 or an Exynos 2100. Don't celebrate. As well as 5G and One UI 3.1 based on Android 11. All right, starting with the regular S21, we're looking at a 6.1 inch Full HD Plus LTPS display running at 120 Hertz. We're getting a 4,000 milliamp hour battery and the triple camera setup that consists of a 12 megapixel main sensor, 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 64 megapixel telephoto. Now, moving on to the S21, it gets a little controversial because you're getting only a 6.7 inch Full HD Plus LTPS display instead of Quad HD running at 120 Hertz, as well as a 4,800 milliamp hour battery and the same camera setup of the smaller variant. But finally, moving on to the Ultra, this is a 6.8 inch W Quad HD Plus LTPO display running at up to 120 Hertz. We're getting a 5,000 milliamp hour battery and the five camera array system that consists of an 108 megapixel sensor, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 10 megapixel 3X optical lens, and a 10 megapixel 10X optical lens, pretty much like what we have with the Huawei P40 Pro Plus. The color variants include Phantom Violet, Pink, Gray, White, Black, and Silver, and they vary depending on which variant you pick. Now, Ice Universe also says that the Ultra packs the strongest optical system known to date, at least when it comes to the telephoto, with both sensors being of 1 over 2.8 inches and 1.22 microns. We are getting closer to that January-February event, which only means that we're also about to end 2020, and I can't wait for that. But uh, yeah, we'll keep you posted as things continue to evolve. And finally, the hottest news today have to do again with Samsung. But sadly, for the beginning of the end of one of my favorite lineups of all time, which we kind of have confirmation for. For years, there's been tons of rumors that Samsung might get rid of the Note line and stick to the S line. And now the Z Fold line and a ton of it makes sense. And just to provide some context over the news, we've learned from various interviews that companies could have their smartphones ready pretty much nine months before the actual launch, at least when it comes to plans and design and engineering and everything. And the reason why I mentioned this is at this moment, the Galaxy Note 21 cannot be found anywhere. See, we have a new tweet from Max Weinbach where he gives a detailed list of Samsung flagships for next year, and the list includes the Galaxy S21 FE, the S21, the S21 Plus, the S21 Ultra, the Z Fold 3, Z Flip 3, and then the Z Fold FE. And that's all nice, but where it gets interesting is where he tweets that three of these devices will support the S Pen, and there's no note on the list. A day earlier, Ice Universe tweeted an unusual clue where he says that there is currently no information on the development of the Note 21 series. Of course, we are still far away from the Note's usual launch time frame, but by this point, we usually have the code names at least. And having tipsters say that there's no information at all on that development is kind of a huge deal or Samsung is getting better at their security. So by the looks of it, unless Samsung actually follows on the patents that we saw when we get the S Pen on the Z Fold, which would make so much sense if they figured that out without scratching the plastic, fine UTG, but there's a plastic covering it. I think it's only gonna be the Galaxy S. Regardless, let us know in the comments down below. What do you think? Are you okay? Do you think that it's time for the Galaxy Note to die? Because in my case, I think it should not. I think Samsung should keep the name. What they should ditch is that name Z Fold. But that's just me. Leave us a comment down below. I'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also, follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram. And follow me on my personal handles to see me wish I were home. 
please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.